Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have a special treat for you. This is the 2021 A91 Toyota Supra. And uh, I know you're just as excited as I am to kind of get into the driver's seat and just drive this car. However, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the lineage, the history, and what makes the, the Supra name so popular. Most of us recognize it from the Fast and the Furious movie. Uh, when you see the late Paul Walker drive the Mark IV highly customized orange Supra, the popularity of the brand just shot up from there. However, even before that, the 90s was a prime time for these JDM cars. And when I say these JDM cars, I'm talking, of course, about the NSX, the RX-7, the Skyline, uh, and of course, the Supra, among other cars. And the Supra in particular stuck its neck out because it offered something out of the box. An inline six 2JZ uh, twin turbocharged engine paired with a six speed manual um, transmission. And that six speed was a little bit rare because in the 90s you saw more of five speeds and you didn't see much of twin turbocharged engines. So that engine was kind of groundbreaking in the JDM market. And fast forward to today, uh, most of the cars that I mentioned are still in production today. However, they kind of created their own little worlds. The NSX, for example, is in supercar territory. The GTR Skyline consistently demolishes other cars on the drag strip, uh, even today with very little change. And of course, we have this, the Toyota Supra Mark V. And after an 18 year gap, the last Mark IV to be produced was in 2002. This made a return for 2020. So we're here today to answer two questions. Number one, does it live up to its hype? And number two, does it live up to its name? So let's get started. Let's talk about the overall uh, design impressions. Uh, number one, this car is very small. And I knew it was small when I saw the pictures, when I read the numbers. But when you actually see it in person, then you truly uh, get the full picture here. It's a small car. If you're above six feet and you're planning on purchasing this vehicle, uh, purchasing it online and booking it, I would say try to see if you can get into the driver's seat and see if it's a comfortable fit for you because it is a little bit tight. However, if you sat in the Toyota 86 and you're okay, then you'll be fine with this because the size is roughly the same, give or take five inches on the length and the width with the Supra being a little bit more bigger. However, the height is the same, 51 inches, and it's crazy to say that out loud, just 51 inches is not that tall. So it's a low car, um, but uh, it looks really nice. It looks, the stance looks really nice. Uh, number two, this is the A91 package. So it offers its own kind of design cues. Uh, number one is this uh, refraction blue that it comes in. And this is the color that really makes this car pop. And it's only offered in the A91 trim. Uh, you can also get the nocturnal black. However, I have, I've seen about roughly two or three of the A91s on the road, and they've always been in this blue. The black is not that popular because again, this color just pops, but it's there if you really don't like those decal strips in the back, you can get the black and it'll kind of blend it in, uh, but that's your option. So, uh, let's talk about the overall uh, the design here coming around the front you have these LED lights uh, this LED strip is one of the longest strip I've ever seen in a, on a car you have these six lens um, LED lights you have three for the low beam three for the high beam of course and these are auto leveling as well so they'll adjust as you drive uh, the front fascia looks nice uh, I love the lines the curvature of the car uh, the fenders, the way they flush the tires. Uh, it's just uh, it's just a nice package. It looks like a meaty car. It is 3,400 pounds, so it's not that light, but it's just, uh, it's just, it looks well put together. It looks like it has a lot of muscle, which of course it does, especially when you look under the hood. Uh, so, but the only thing is last week, I kind of bashed the Type R for having fake vents. This car has, it's no exception. It kind of uses, um, you know design them is from the same playbook you have like a couple of fake vents here on the front on the on the hood as well and on the on the side door over there they say you can make them functional i think the only one you can really make functional is that one those two really don't go anywhere this one maybe but you have to do a lot of engineering around it that one is just attached to the door so i mean really it serves no purpose but i'm not going to say that it looks bad or you know i'm not going to drill on it too hard 
it, it looks cool. I mean, I'll give it bonus points for not making those vents so big and so, you know, blatantly obvious that they're fake. I mean, it's just, they're small. They kind of just sleep into the car, uh, the overall body of it. So, uh, you know, it's something that we can overlook. Coming around the tire here, uh, again, something uh, specific to the A91 are these matte black uh, rims, these are twin spoke rims, 19 inch. The tires themselves, they're Michelin Performance uh, Summer Sport tires, 255 on the width and 275 on the rears. That makes sense because this is a real, real drive car. Uh, and then you have 35 on the aspect ratio and then the 19 inch rims. So uh, the rims overall look nice, uh, especially in this matte black. You have the four piston Brembo brakes. Uh, if you get the 3.0 Premium or the A91, you get that Toyota Supra. Um, logo on the brake calipers themselves you don't get it on any other trim below that these side uh, view mirrors uh, carbon fiber again specific to the a91 just a quick note about these mirrors uh, a lot of when you put the car in reverse the passenger side mirror folds down and a lot of people kind of ask questions around this like why is it only the passenger side and the reason behind this is because if you're driving the car and you're parking it on the side of a road, you're parking it in the direction that you're facing. So when you're backing up into your parking spot, you should have that mirror pointing to the curb. And this mirror stays still to kind of show you the traffic that's coming behind you. It makes sense. The logic is there. I mean, you know, engineers and, you know, design teams put, came together in a room to think of these things through. So, I mean, it's not like it's a, it's a flaw or a mistake or anything. Um, there's a reason why these things are done so a nice large heavy door uh, you have these satin finish black decals again this these are a hit or a miss amongst a couple of people I don't mind the way it looks it looks good um, but uh, some people really don't prefer it. They, they would if they had the option to they would just strip that off and just keep the other a91 design elements Coming around the rear, you have this spoiler again. This is uh, specific to the A91 package. There's a new one for 2022, which is called the CF edition. That's full carbon fiber. So that wing becomes carbon fiber. I believe the splitters and the diffuser becomes uh, carbon fiber as well. Coming around the rear, you have nice looking taillights. However, I don't see much of the Mark IV embedded into this design. This is a completely new car with just the Supra name slapped onto it. But I like how they kept the original font of that Supra, that original badge. It looks nice. You have the GR badge. This is Gazoo Racing. For those of you who don't know, it's one of Toyota's performance divisions. You have the TRD as well. Don't confuse it with that. The TRD is the one you can find on the Camry and some of the trucks. Uh, but they're two different entities, both being offered in the market. Gazoo Racing you'll find with the Supra, I believe the new 86, and the Yaris as well. These are nice looking exhaust tips. These are slightly bigger than the ones you'll find on the 2.0 variant of this car. Variant is kind of a, a touchy word, especially in these times. So I'll say in this trim. Uh, these are brushed as well, brushed aluminum. So it's just something to keep in mind. The 2.0 comes with polished aluminum. And if, you, if you're aware, the polish, like it gets dirty quickly, it gets scratches up quickly. The brush, however, it retains um, much longer without getting any kind of damage. Even if you're a, a watch enthusiast, you'll know like when the, po like this is a polished watch, stainless steel, and this has tons of scratches. So it's good that they put the brush there for you. Uh, let's open up the trunk. Let me show you guys real quickly what that looks like. This is the key fob. I'm surprised this is not blue, but um, I guess the red still outlines the performance version of this car. It's a decent sized trunk, nothing to write home about, to be honest. Uh, the opening is small, but the overall trunk space is not bad. You can still fit quite a few things here, carry on bag, a couple of backpacks, um, but, uh, and then you get the a first aid kit that comes with the car and it's good that they have an opening from the driver in the passenger seat to the trunk so you can kind of toss things in or grab things in as you please gas tank on the right side this is obviously a premium uh, gas tank 
just um, keep uh, this is not a capless I'm surprised that, like not every car is capless they should really kind of enforce that now um, and this is um, uh, a 13.7 gallon tank I believe premium gas of course so so yeah overall the car looks great however as I mentioned I'm not seeing much of the mark IV in this Supra so it kind of goes to that second question that I'm that I was asking uh, does it live up to the name and frankly in my opinion if I can give you some sort of insight it kind of doesn't it's kind of a new car new platform we all know there's a lot of BMW embedded throughout this vehicle um, but uh, however it's it's still it's still a nice package i mean i know they could have just labeled as the ft1 however if you put the super badge on it then you get the popularity around this car and uh, let's check out the interior get that nice little animation on the gauge cluster when you get into the car so overall i mean let's address the elephant in the cabin you're seeing a lot of BMW in this car. You're seeing a lot of the Z4 in this car. Um, the iDrive system, you know, the, the whole from the thermostat to the, trans, to the shifter, everything is kind of BMW here. I'm surprised that there's not much Toyota going on in this car besides this badge right here. Uh, but otherwise, it's not something that I would complain about. The, the, the BMW interiors, I've always liked for their, you know, their clean look, their simplicity it's nice the shifter i was always been a fan of um so you have this 8.8 gauge cluster and i believe this is also 8.8 inches uh the gauge cluster is kind of unique to this car and well when we turn it on we'll look at that more carefully uh you have this uh the typical i drive system on this car however this screen is a little bit dim um so in even the daylight it's the brightness, the max brightness is still not bright enough, so it's kind of hard to read and see that. Uh, but I mean, it's not something that bothers uh, too much. Then you have, of course, your media controls, your climate controls, uh, and then you have this shifter, and you have just some of the some of the basic controls that you find in your iDrive system. However, here you have the automatic engine off. Uh, toggle switch you have the sport mode and then you have the parking sensors and the safety system and then the electronic handbrake this is a two-seater car so just uh, keep that in mind there's nothing in the back except that opening that I spoke about earlier these are nice seats now uh, they're Alcantara uh, they, they're they're pretty they're pretty good they hold you somewhat in place they don't hold you that tightly but it's okay they're comfortable though so and uh, this is a 14-way adjustable seat with memory seating for the driver's side and uh, yeah let's uh let's start up this car and let's see how it looks the power button is a little bit hidden behind the wheel uh, so yeah i love that gauge cluster it's a clean look the tachometer right in the middle uh going up to 6500 rpm um one of the things that I forgot to show you actually was under the hood. So let's take a look at that while we have the engine on. Love that it has the hydraulic struts here for the hood. This is a big hood actually now that I'm looking at it. So this is the B58 uh, engine. This is the BMW engine with just the Toyota badge slapped onto it. Uh, but it's a great engine nonetheless if you remember if you recall like BMW engines This is the successor to the N55 engine the ones that you'll find in the 335s uh, And it's a great engine if one thing about BMW is if you have driven one uh, You'll know that They do a great job of making the driver feel connected to the car with its aggressive steering and its throttle response and things like that uh, this uh, this engine outputs uh, 382 horsepower and 368 pound-feet of torque uh, it's a great number make sure if you're buying this car get the 2021 because there's a 50 horsepower bump from the 2020 version and I, frankly it's a, it's a little bit of a mistake on Toyota's part they should never have released it with uh, low 300 horsepower numbers because you are 
you know you're you're straying away from a certain class of the car you have the nissan 400z right around the corner which is basically your direct competitor i believe front engine you know rear wheel drive uh, but the six speed in that one i believe uh, and that's at 400 horsepower right so you need to be able to compete against at least that car and uh, so now with the 2021 you get the you get a good amount of power in this car you have these chassis uh, braces as well uh, which are for the 3.0 premium and up so overall it's a great engine let's take it out on the drive and let's see how it performs so let's take this car out for a spin first off let me show you that reverse camera it's a nice decent reverse camera you have trajectory as you can see the passenger side mirror folded down as i mentioned before uh, so let's put it to drive Now the exhaust note, uh, rather than me trying to explain how it sounds, I'm gonna switch it into sport mode, really open it up and roll down the window and let the car do the talking for you. for this drive just to kind of get you guys that full uh, experience of from the exhaust and as you heard earlier that exhaust note is just absolutely ridiculous it's, it's so refined it's so smooth but it has those pops and crackles especially I'm gonna toss into manual more uh, shortly and, and show you guys you know when you downshift what it sounds like uh, but the, honestly this car is just feels great. I'm gonna do try to do as much performance driving as I can being mindful of the fact that I'm on uh, these roads I mean look at the way this this car pulls it's such a seamless effort there's no lag. I mean, the turbos sound great. The, tra the transmission, it shifts well. It's not as fast as a dual clutch. This is an eight-speed ZF transmission. Uh, so it's, it won't be as fast as a dual clutch, but it's still relatively quick. Let me talk about the, uh, the clearance here. This is a small windshield. Uh, the A pillar and the B pillar are quite, uh, they're in your way. Let me put it that way. So if that's something that bothers you, that is evident here in this car. You do feel a little squished, you know, but it does have a low center of gravity. Um, so if you're not used to that, um, uh, th that you will find that level of experience here in this car. Uh, the fuel economy in this car is not that bad. It's 22 in the city, 30 on the highway, so you're getting roughly 25 combined. Um, let me toggle the switch here to kind of give you the indicator. 265 miles, and it's a full tank here. I believe, well, let's add in 10 more miles because I drove it previously. So, yeah, 275 miles on a full tank. It's not bad, uh, especially with the uh, inline six 3.0 engine. Uh, it's direct injection, of course. I will say uh, the 2.0, the, the, that variant is there. It's actually new for the year as well. Uh, so you get a mid 200 horsepower car, you know, just intermediate from the 86 and then this 3.0 premium. But that 2.0, when you drive it, it's, um, it's obviously not as, um, you know engaging as this car but because you have a smaller engine you have um, less weight on that front axle and so it's more balanced throughout so this car when you take it around corners uh, you'll feel that it has a I mean it has
has a little bit of body roll to it and it's just it, it's it's planted as it can be however you can kind of feel the, the body rolling a bit but again why wouldn't you get the 3.0 you get that amazing you get the amazing power you get the amazing exhaust uh, this car you can do the, um, 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds and just remember the 2020 you you're above four seconds is because of that that power um, difference in the car it's not a bad car to take uh, you know just locally driving as well as I'm doing right now I'm on the Pacific Coast Highway here and as we all know this is a beautiful highway uh, oh it's gonna open up shortly but it's uh, even if you're driving it casually take off the sport mode and uh, you won't get those aggressive downshifts you won't get that aggressive response from the throttle uh, so you can make for a casual drive if you know if that's what you want uh, but I mean truly what you want is to hit that button really open it up and that pole <laughs> It's just you get lost you get lost in that tachometer you get lost in the speed uh, like you look up for once you're at maybe 40 and you look up and you put your foot down for like half a second you look down and you're you're in a whole different realm here so uh, this car is just it's just gonna put a smile to your face every time you put your foot down uh, and the, the, the feedback that you get combined with that sound combined with the overall driving dynamics of this car you're gonna you're not gonna regret your purchase this car comes in at about mid 50,000 uh, you can get the 2.0 for mid 40 I believe uh, but it's really worth it the a91 as well you get those aesthetic design cues uh, which really pop the car especially uh, as I mentioned in the blue this refraction blue that you get Look at those downshifts, like, that's crazy. I'm not even doing that, that's just the car responding itself. <laughs> it's gonna put a smile on your face every single time and uh, it's just truly an unreal experience. It's something that you have to get into the driver's seat. You have to experience it for yourself. And uh, I'm not, I haven't driven the 2021, so I don't know how that responds. I haven't driven the Mark IV Supra either. I never got the chance to do that. So I can't make a fair comparison. Um, but I mean, I can tell you because this car is more modernized, it's probably more refined. And that BMW engine is just outstanding. I'm not too sure about the reliability. Let's see long term how this car holds up. But uh, I mean, Toyotas are known to hold up pretty well. But uh, again, we have BMW components integrated all throughout the platform so
So there you guys have it, the 2021 A91 Toyota Supra. Overall, it's a great uh, driving experience. The video doesn't do justice. No video out there does. You have to get into the driver's seat and experience the car for yourself. You'll get an organic, natural feeling. Uh, the, uh, the, the response from the engine, the throttle, the visceral sound that comes out of the exhaust, and it's truly a performance package that you can't miss out on. Uh, now let's address the two questions that I asked in the beginning of the video. Uh, number one, does it live up to its hype? I believe the answer is yes. It's honestly, you saw the video, you saw the driving experience. It's just a great package. It's, um, however, like, you know, the use case is kind of specific. It's a two door, two seater car. So it's really a bachelor car or, or, you know, a weekend car. So, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you, you're getting a lot of car out of this price point for mid 50,000. The second question is, does it live up to its name? The answer, my opinion, is no. Well, it's a yes or a no, uh, and I know you're going to hate me for saying this. It's agree to disagree kind of matter. Uh, this car has no ties with the Mark IV. It doesn't kind of carry anything from that platform. It's just, uh, it's really, it's a BMW car with the with the z4, with z4 components so, however the exterior is unique so that's good but it's just got a, a toyota badge slapped onto it uh it really they should have just kept it as the ft1 name but we'll let that go because you when you slap on the supra name then you carry its legacy forward which i like it's a great marketing tactic as well you're carrying the legacy you're carrying the name and frankly this car is carrying it well so it's a yes or no answer um, let me know what you guys think. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for next week. Thanks.